I like this theme, Boots on the Ground. Boots on the Ground. I want to pose a question by way of thought. Can God depend on you? I, that's my question. Can God depend on you? Listen, it says, after this, the Lord appointed 72 other and sent them two by two. After what? It says, after this, the Lord appointed, after what? After he had made the statement that no one who puts his hand to the plow and look back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. My question today is one that each and every individual is going to have to evaluate and answer for themselves. You are the only one to determine if you are dependable for the work of the ministry so that God can use your life to be a light to a dark world. Because at the end of the day, I think what is necessary for all of us to see is that God did not leave any of us here to beautify his earth. But he has called us to be the salt of the earth. We are a city that sits up on a hill. Watch me here that cannot be hid. And therefore, it is a requirement for us to let our lights so shine before men that men will see our good works, but God gets the glory. And the question is, are your boots on the ground and are you ready to fight the good fight of faith to let men see that you are not ashamed of the gospel of Christ? so amazing to me that the people that call themselves Christians, often you can't tell who they are to Sunday morning. Amen. And guys, we have been called out of darkness into this marvelous light for the purpose of being used by a mighty God so that lost men can be found and so that dead men can live again. But the question is, can God depend on you? And let me help you, it's not that he need you. You ought to just be blessing him for choosing you with all your shortcomings. Amen. Didn't nobody say nothing there, but let me help you. As good as you look right now, you're still as a filthy rag. You still fall short. You still miss the target. You still miss the mark. And let me tell you, at your very best, you still deserve to die. And the only reason you're here right now is because of grace and mercy took the place of justice. And since grace and mercy showed up, you ought to make yourself available to be used by who sent grace and mercy. A hundred and twenty-eight years. I heard pastor say it ain't always been easy. And granted, he hasn't been here too long, but the years he's been here, it hadn't been easy. But isn't it amazing how something 
of this magnitude can start with a dream. And because of dependable people can move from a dream to a reality. And because of now dependable people can grow and continue to go from here to a point where eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. As a matter of fact, it ain't even entered into the hearts of men the things that the Salem church can accomplish and can do in the life of people. And granted, you have one of the most beautiful buildings I've seen. I mean, to stand here and look out and preach, I'm sorry if y'all don't think I'm looking at you but the deal is I'm not I'm looking at this beautiful window up front I'm just marveled by what I see because I don't just see a beautiful window with a multiplicity of colors I see folks that have fought hard that have prayed continuously I see folks that have given their lives so that air conditions can blow inside of churches I see folk that gave their finances so you and I can come to worship and not have to worry about things or the elements of the outside and let me tell you there's a group of folks coming up behind us that need some folk like those that have gone on before us so that the ball can keep rolling so that the boots can stay on the ground. And my question is a relevant question. Can God depend on you to be one of those people that will continue to go out? And I tell you, the problem I found with church pastor is too many of us wait on folk to come in. But don't you know they ain't going to come in until you go out? It is a mandate by the master that we go out and win lost souls to come in. Can I just bless a church even that's 128 years? Because some of you are so, so far from the mark that you still believe that it's the pastor's job to grow the church. Not so. Can I tell you? The pastor don't grow a church. The pastor is the keeper of the church. It is your job, your responsibility to go out and win lost souls and bring them here so the under-shepherd can shepherd those sheep and the under-shepherd can take care of those sheep. The under-shepherd can love those sheep, but the sheep need to go get some sheep and bring them into the pastor for the under-shepherd to pastor. Preach help. Can I just help about 20 of y'all that have retired from your job? Just because you've retired from your job, you don't retire from ministry. And when you feel, as a matter of fact, let me rephrase it. Be careful that you feel you've given all that you had to give. Because if you have given all, ain't no use in the Lord leaving you here. God ain't going to use no useless soldiers in his army. And if you just that tired, well, you're going to pass the torch. First of all, it ain't your torch to pass, and you don't have a right to pass what don't belong to you. As long as you are here, you got to work the works of him that sent you while it is day, because your night will come. And when your night come, not if. But when your night come, you can no longer work. And let me tell you, you better work as long as you can while you can because after you die, the only thing that will follow you is your works. And let me bless you one more time. The work of ministry and the work of the church is not the work that's done at the church. Amen. Some man told me the other day, this has nothing to do with the price of tea in China. 
This old fellow, he came up to me the other day and he insulted me by calling me a young whippersnapper. <laughs> I didn't know to be intrigued or to be insulted. And I say, what do you mean? He said, you think you something. And you know, I just live in the suburbs now. But I'm from Oak Cliff, Texas. 214, that's my hood. I just moved to the 972. And I asked him, I said, well, why do you say that about me and you really don't even know me? I just look at the way you carry yourself. You just walk like you just think you all of that. I said, well, could it be that I'm slew foot and bow leg? <laughs> and my sciatic nerve is bothering me right about now. So it's not that I think I'm anything. The deal is, is that I'm confident in who I serve. And because of the confidence I have in my God, I don't have to feel what man can do for me, nor what man can do to me. Because as long as I got God on my side, I got more than enough that will defeat any enemy that comes up against me. Let me help you. Let me tell y'all what I'm going to do. I'm going to help you. I'm going to elaborate for about five minutes. I'm going to holler for ten seconds and then I'm going to be through. <laughs> In that order. <laughs> A lot of church people do not really and truly understand the power of Satan. And a lot of us confuse the spirit of God with the spirit of the devil. Both of them are spirits. And although there is a difference in the expected outcome, there is still a very close similarity in work. Both of them are spirits. Both of them are looking to use whoever will make themselves available. Neither one one can force himself on you and chooses not to and the other can't force himself on you although he wants you to believe that he can and both of them again let me be redundant in saying is simply looking for people to employ to do their job when you are employed by the Holy Spirit the job and the expected outcome is not for you to go to heaven by yourself. It's but for you to draw others that are lost to go to heaven with you. And the job of the, of the other is to entice you to the point where heaven don't even matter. That you're just happy to have heaven right now on earth. And therefore, a lot of times, because we're selfish and self-centered people, we don't care about the afterlife. We're just worried about this life. And let me bless you, this life is not going to always pay rewards and dividends to those who God employ. As a matter of fact, there have been a whole lot of days I've had to cry serving God, but I recall serving the devil. There have been a whole lot of days I had some smiles. So somebody then asked me, well, pastor, if you had to cry serving God and you smile serving the devil, why do you serve God now? I say, because I'm not worried about the pay. I'm looking at the retirement plan. And because the retirement plan offers such good benefits, 
I choose to work on this job for that master. And let me bless you, the pay ain't too bad either because even in the midst of my storms, I found a way to have peace. Not that my storms have always came to cease, but that he gives my mind peace in the midst of my storm. And let me bless about 30 of you. Even when you're working for him, it does not mean that you will not encounter storms, but what it does mean is that he has the power to take you through your storm, over your storm, under your storm, around your storm. Whatever he decides to do, you just got to stay with him because whatever happens at the end of the day, you got to realize that it's still working together for your good. But the one thing I notice about Christians is that they jump ship when the water get too rough. Why would you jump in rough water? The ship is the safest place to be. And if the water is about to beat the ship, what would happen to you out of the ship? Let me help you. You don't swim good enough to jump the ship. And you got to learn to fight your way through problems, trials, tribulations, and struggles. Because let me help you, everything that you encounter is really to prepare you for your next encounter. I got three minutes, then I'm going to holler for ten seconds. And I mean, I'm going to holler, I'm just... Can he, can he, can he, can he depend on you, first of all, not to turn back? Because again, nobody that sets his hand to the plow and turns back is fit for the kingdom. The second thing, can he depend on you to be one of the ones to go out? What are you scared of? Well, you in the suburbs. We in South Dallas. You know that when you chose the church to come to where you were. <laughs> Half of you grew up over here, so it ain't nothing to be scared of no how. <laughs> and God has not given you the spirit of fear. And if you truly believe that God has not given you the spirit of fear, what are you fearful of? Are you really discounting the God that you serve to be a protector for you? And if you're going to say he's a protector for you at church, show it outside of church. Where did wimpy Christians come from? Where did lazy Christians come from? Where did inactive Christians come from? And I'm not saying Salem have them. I know for a fact I have some at community. But since y'all are here, I might as well share with y'all what y'all have here too. what I like doing about services like this because after I mess it up I can just go back home <laughs> and Pastor Atkins like oh I've been wanting to say that oh I've been wanting to say it say it doc don't be scared y'all listen we have been employed by the master to be a messenger to the masses in order to win lost souls to Christ. You say your boots are on the ground, but what ground are they on? 
because the ground that matters is the ground where no one wants to tread and therefore it is up to us because no one should hear the gospel twice until everyone has heard it once but there are people who are in your neighborhood ain't hearing it because the church is too stuck up being inside the church and nobody want to go outside the church and I hear some of y'all dumb folk well don't we pay the pastor for that hell no I'm sorry. No, I ain't. You have to understand your importance in the part that God has put you in. And your importance is not to sing in a choir. Singing is good. Your importance is not to usher. Ushering is good. Your importance is to get outside the doors and bring lost souls in. You don't have to worry about South Dallas having a bad reputation when we can take thugs and turn them into Christians. I know he's all right. If I had good sense, I'd sit down right there. But since I don't have good sense, I'm going to preach a little longer. He says, the harvest is plentiful, but where are my workers? It is so amazing, and this is true, y'all. On paper, we have about 3,000 plus members. But when I'm entertaining conversation and folks ask me what size church I have, I say about three or four hundred. And they look at me funny and they say, Pastor, I thought you had more folk than that. I say, I got more folk. But I don't count folk. Folk ain't what move me. Yeah, we put down chairs at our church, but that ain't exciting to me. What excites me is when people are ready to join the bandwagon to get in the field and work. And let me tell you, at, at, at our church, at your church, let, check at the Potter's House, at Tony Evans Church, and the rest of them, you're going to find 20% of the folk doing all 100% of the work, while the 80% want to jump and shout and ain't done nothing. But let me bless you. Don't you grow weary in well-doing because when the time is right, the Lord is going to allow you to reap a harvest if you do not faint. Stop worrying about who ain't and just praise God that you still can. Watch the scenario. Watch the scenario. If Dr. Atkins and I are supposed to do the work and I'm working while he's sitting if I spend too much time focus on him sitting, nobody is working. So either I can keep working hoping that he decide to join in, but if I stop and wait on him to join in, ain't nothing getting done. Stop meeting about folk who ain't doing something and start meeting with the folk who wanna do something. The church is the most interesting place because we put people in position because of their titles on their jobs and their letters on their name. And I ought to tell about 50 of y'all this evening that just because folk can work and run IBM, that doesn't mean they can run a church. Uh, 
Y'all excuse me. Y'all ain't talking back to me. Atkins, am I all right? Okay, thank you. And y'all say something to him about saying that I was all right. He going to tell me and we will fight. And you know what? I know some of y'all might can't fight no more, but you better show up and try. I'm talking to y'all five right here, right here. Pop, stand up. Oh, you, you cute now. You ain't going to use your stick to stand, huh? I checked you out. <laughs> Fight with me, Dad. Fight with me, Dad. Fight with me, Dad. Fight with me, Dad. Fight with me. And let me tell you, I don't use young, vibrant folk. I need available folk who saying we can do this regardless of what they say. I just need somebody who will say, let's go and make it happen. Stop waiting on everybody. Take the bodies that you have and go and win who you can with what you got. The field is white and all ready to harvest, but there are no laborers. It's amazing to me. Atkins, one of the hardest positions that we try to feel at church is men to work in the parking lot. And some of the concern is that they want to get paid. They, they, what's the compensation? And the second concern is that don't cut me off. Do it again and see what happens. The second concern is a lot of the women that come driving their cars to the church cuss them out because they can't park where the men tell them they can't park. I got a 34-year-old healthy woman who want to park on the second road that says handicapped. And then she'll pull out her grandmama's tag and say, I got a handicapped placard. And my men at the church say I can't volunteer because your women keep coming up here cussing us out. You know what I told them? Say what? You know what I told them? Cuss them back. <laughs> Y'all think I'm playing? I said it. But why is it that we can have order everywhere but at the church? Why is it that folk will follow rules everywhere but at the church? This is the place of God where the Holy Ghost dwells. These are the people of God that should be coming loving and smiling, just happy to be alive. But at the church, you find more hell because folk that say they are Christians really ain't. They can dress like you. They can sing along with you. They can even raise their hand during the hot spirited time. But let me bless you real quick. That does not define your Christianity. What defines your Christianity is how do you love the unlovable how do you give to those that are in need and stop giving in order to receive something back the the harvest is plentiful but the workers are few look God says, but let me go ahead and forewarn you. You're not taking on an easy role because I'm going to send you out as lambs among wolves. 
I love watching the animal channel. I'm intrigued by nature and the things that allows wildlife to survive. I, I can sit there literally and watch it all day long and learn so much. But God says, I'm going to send you out as lambs in the midst of wolves. Y'all, excuse me. Wolves have lamb for lunch. A wolf will love some lamb chops. <laughs> and the Lord says, I'm sending you out as a lamb in the midst of wolves. And right there, what you have to see is something that is unwritten, but I saw it plain as day. If you are going to send me out as a lamb in the midst of a wolf, in the midst of wolves, what are you telling me? That they are going to eat me? He says, that ain't the lesson at all. The lesson is, since I'm sending you out, know that I'll protect you. Know that I'm with you always, even until the end of the world. Yes, wolves are out there. You're going out loving. You're going out sharing. You're going out caring. Yes, they're going to attack. But you got to know I got you. And let me bless about 40 of you so you can get off your fanny and get out there and let's do God's work together. You don't have to worry about what they can do because you got him on your side. And I ought to just tell you as I close, if the Lord is for you, who cares who's against you? You got to know that Jesus not only knows where you are, he not only knows when you're there, but he knows when to show up to get you out of the mess you're in. But you got to be doing something for him in order for him to show up for you. Too many of us have a user's mentality. We want God to be there for us, but none of us want to be there for him. And I know some of you, well, what do I need to do in order to be there for him? Be available. Be available. I'm sorry. Be available. Be, be available. Make yourself available. Don't let your time be your time. Let your time be his time. And whatever he want to do with your time, make yourself available. And when you make yourself available, he will use you. But not only will he use you, he'll also bless you. And let me just help you real quick. Blessings are not always in the form of dollar bills. I know people with money, but will give up money to have good health. I know people with money that has nice bedroom sets, but still don't get a good night of sleep. I know people with money that has the best insurance, but their health is still bad. He don't always bless you with money but he'll give you just a reasonable portion of your health and strength. He'll clothe you in your right mind. He will do for you what you can't do for yourself. Dad, how old are you? Huh? 86. Now, three score years and 10 is 70. And you are 86. You are well into overtime. 
in another year and a half, you will start double over time. And you're still walking. You're still sitting on the front row. You still look good. Don't you know that that's because you have been serving God? And somebody ought to know that serving the Lord will not only pay off after a while, but serving the Lord will pay off right now. I made up my mind because of proven history. He's been so good to me. And let me help you. I, 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 don't, I, I look a whole lot better than my circumstances. Let me tell you, you don't want to wear my boots right now. A daughter with a heart problem, heart transplant, just got out of the hospital yesterday. You don't want to wear my boots. A son with special needs where his brain never developed. You don't want to wear my boots. A son that underachieved, that had all the talent in the world. You don't want to wear my boots. I look better than my circumstances. But I ought to tell you that even when your circumstances are bad, he'll keep your mind in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on him won't he do it won't he do it yeah 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 I know he's alright 